This is Twit. All right, so why don't we talk about this other device, the LG Velvet. Um, so this is one of the first times on this show where the three of us have basically received a um, a review device on the on on the same device at basically the same time. So we're like, why don't we do like a three view of the LG Velvet? Um, so that's what we're here to do. And there's there's no easy way to do this and not have it end up being like super duper long, right? Because we each have thoughts and opinions and there's there is a lot of ground to cover, but we've also have talked about this, the LG Velvet on the show uh, in the past. So we were talking about just kind of like breaking it down into three areas and kind of sharing a little bit of our thoughts in each area and then giving it a, a score and then averaging the score because why the heck not? I mean, it's different. Let's let's just go with it and see what happens. So um, so I don't know. Who wants to go first? Do we want to start with kind of the design and, and the feel of the device? Because yes. that seems like an obvious yeah. place to start. Yes. Flo, you were the first person to say yes. So go first. Well, I would like to just point to the fact that this opens up like a little book. Well, Some you're, might you're, say you're you're looking at it with you're looking at it with it with the dual screen case. Yes, I yeah. am. So right, you do have to purchase the dual screen right. case for an extra hundred dollars, but it's a little different this time around. It's a tiny bit thinner. Uh, it's a little more sleek. It's also got like this open ended spot right here for the buttons on the right side. It's got kind of this slightly revamped window here, and one very little cool thing is the always on display. Let's see if I can get it to, aha, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I, you can upload your oh. own little like picture. And so I put a little Sailor Moon gif, um, which is kind of neato. I, I really was having fun with that. I really had fun just kind of going in and trying to find an aesthetic for it because that's kind of the first thing I do when I get a phone and I'm, I'm really feeling the silver sheen of this. Um, and it really, it feels like uh, I'm. I might upset some people by saying this, but it really kind of feels like an older Samsung phone I've put my hands on before. Just in terms yep. of like the thinness, how big it I is, agree. how much hand space it takes up. Um, it feels like a. It feels like a Note, a Samsung Note. It really does. I completely agree. I'm happy that you said that because I had that down uh, in my notes too. It's. Uh, Definitely has a feel in in a couple of areas, and we'll talk about it in performance as well. Well, no, no, sorry, no, no, sorry. This is this is firmly in the design camp. From a hardware design perspective, I I do feel like it kind of feels like a Samsung phone um, mm -hmm. as well, kind of like an maybe a a, a couple of generations older uh, Samsung device, which is not a knock at all. Like I think if there's one really strong quality about the LG Velvet, it is the design of the device. Uh, which yep. is just, it's really well designed. Although you can see, picks up a lot of fingerprints, but which I, phone I was, doesn't with a glass back, so. I was just about to, I was just about to say that like, I, I am very impressed by the design and the feel of it when I first got it and I actually handed it to my wife and she was like, oh, that's light, you know? And she's like, does it even mm -hmm. have a battery? And so we went into the specs and like, and actually comparing it to my OnePlus, um, OnePlus 7 Pro, it, like the OnePlus 7 Pro feels like a brick compared to this. It's so light, it feels nice, but that silver, uh, glass back, you know, the combination of the glass plus the silver backing makes, you know, almost, almost accentuates the fingerprints, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the assumption is that you get a case, like in the little kit that we got, we, we got the dual screen case, but we also got kind of a fashion case that goes around it with a little holder. And so if you are throwing a case on, you won't really care about it. But if you're someone like me who doesn't like cases, you know, you got a smudgy device. So, um, I gotta, I gotta knock it for that. Like that's my only knock, but that the, all the phones are going to get that, but everything else, I like the placement of the buttons. I like the, 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 the feel of the buttons. I like that they are physical buttons buttons that tap in and, and you feel the click when you do it. Um, and it's a long phone. We talked about this when, when we first got it. I mean, this is, you know, comparing this right now on the video to my mm -hmm. OnePlus one, one 7 Pro, you know, you can see I've got a, and I, I've got even a case on my OnePlus 7 Pro and you can see how much higher it is than that, which I already thought the OnePlus 7 Pro was, was a long phone as it was. Um, this aspect ratio is enormous. Um, but Given what you can do with it, and especially if you have the dual the dual screen case for gaming or for media consumption or productivity, it 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 becomes a very versatile device. 
So, uh, yeah, so I, I like it. I, I, I like the design and feel of it. I give it definitely a, a good score. So we should probably explain what we're doing. So we're going to be scoring everything on a one to five rating, one being the lowest, five being the best. And then we'll tally it up and give it a total uh, and uh, give it a total score. So yeah. um, uh, who is going to be tallying amongst us? I'll do the tallying. How's that? OK. So, okay. Uh, so Jason, design and feel, what score do you give it? Um, I give it a four, I'd say. Um, maybe would have scored it a little bit higher, except one thing that I didn't mention is I just don't like the LG skin. And I feel like that's kind of part of the design and feel is kind of yeah. the interaction with the skin. Mm. And I feel like it's really heavy handed. When I talked about other ways that it reminded me of Samsung, it reminded me of it reminds me of kind of like older school Samsung that I just never Actually, cared for. It's always reminding you of things. Oh, by the way, did you know that you can do this? It's just like, shut up. I just want to use my phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do agree with you there, Jason. That's a very good point. Um, all so right, so four. Flo, what do you, Flo, what do you give it? One, one through five. Um, I would also give it a four. I agree with Jason about the UI. It's just, I'm, I'm disappointed that it's such a, it's such a chore to get, first of all, it's such a chore to set up the phone. I, yeah, if you set it up totally. kind of blankly without bringing over your things, and even if you do bring over your things from another phone, you have to go in and do a little bit of configuration, change the home screen so that you have a, an app drawer, and then you got to hide some apps. And, you know, the first five minutes after I had set up my Google account, the phone is, is yelling at me to set up Facebook. Your friends are probably on Facebook. Guess what, buddy? I left Facebook like almost three years ago. What are you doing? Leave me alone. I don't like that. <laughs> But it is an important reminder just kind of where we are at with regard – like this is what we get for these kind of carrier exclusive. Like this is what we have to deal with. Um, yeah, and to add to that, true. the at t bloat, I mean I appreciate that HBO Max was already installed on there. I am paying for it through YouTube TV, but – it didn't need to be on there kind of thing. You know, there's a lot there's of stuff on there that doesn't need to be – well, there's too much bloat, but I, I also I chalk that up to the AT&T, the, the, the phone I got, yeah. was, you know, in partnership with AT&T. And there's a lot of, you know, like I joke because the, the DC Universe app is on there because DC is owned by AT&T now because AT&T owns Warner Brothers. Right, Same reason why, right. why, you have, why HBO Max is on there. So it's kind of back. It, it falls in the same carrier bloatware category that I got away from going to OnePlus um, that I forgot exists. And it's just as bad on Verizon. So, you know, bloat is a thing. <laughs> Um, I, you know, so we got to ding it, but to move on, I also give it a four for design. Um, yeah, you know, re really really close, really strong, but, uh, yeah, but all the, bl the bloatware, the, the UI stuff and the smudgy background. So, all right. So that leads us into performance. Uh, Jason, yeah. how did this, how did this, uh, yeah. phone perform for you? I gotta say like, okay. Realizing that the OnePlus Nord was the first device that I had used, uh, with the 765G. The LG Velvet also has the 765G. On the Nord, I felt like that processor was screaming fast. Like I felt like it was as fast as I needed it to be. Very rarely did I run up against issues where I, where I felt like it was not a top-of-the-line premium uh, processor. On the Velvet, I feel differently. Like... It, it, and it's and it's probably impossible right now as I'm doing you know this this show to kind of show it. You can kind of see it in scrolling through some things and everything. But there were just times where I'm using this thing, and I'm getting this like this like janking, juddery sort of thing that is just really apparent to my eyes. And um and I didn't get that on the Nord, and I do get it here. And I guess the only thing you know, that, that I can kind of chalk that up to is probably the heavy handed, uh, the more, more anyways, heavy handed, uh, LG skin approach. There's just so much customization going on here that I think maybe it handles the uh, processor. Oh, I got to apparently plug in my camera. Um, there, there's just more for the processor to manage. That's my guess, but I wasn't too happy with that. So I gave it a three. I would also echo your sentiments that I did find it. And it's funny because we talk about the bloatware and the stuff in there. So there's like a Game of Thrones game in there and Final Fantasy and like all this sort of stuff. So I was tinkering, tinkering around with it. And as I was popping from app to app and I, you know, play a little bit of the game and then pop over to Pluto TV and watch a little video and then pop over to a browser and do stuff. The more I used it, the more I saw it kind of dragging its feet a little bit. Um, and I chalked it up to doing things that were, you know, kind of heavy on the data connection and heavy on the processor stuff and that sort of thing. But then 
then, you know, as I as I continue to use it, I would see that kind of jittering that you, you mentioned, Jason, and, and that sort of thing. So it really kind of bugged me in that regard. Um, but that said, I did not find it unusable. So I would go a little higher and give it a four. So. Hmm. I think I might have to agree with Ron there because I didn't get I didn't get time with this phone to really like put it through its paces, but I did use it kind of for some things that I usually use a phone for, which is um, kind of going through. I used it to like write, you know, write some text and I used it to take photos and I used it to kind of play some little like mobile games that I like to play. And I even used it with like Infinite Painter because I wanted to try out the stylus support. And those things, I mean, they worked in the app when it, it was running very smoothly, but it definitely like compared to the V60 Think Q, there was a little bit of a, it's like this slight noticeable delay, if that makes sense. The kind of thing that you yep. feel with like a mid-range phone. And it was especially apparent with the notifications because it would ping and then the notification would come in if that makes sense. It was like, you know, it wasn't this instantaneous sort of feature. So I am going to stick with the four as well, because I think it's, I think it's fine for an average user, but maybe power users aren't going to really find what they want here. So. All right. Okay. So moving on to the camera. Oh, and, oh, so, and to so, Oh, we're going to tabulate at the end. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we're going to tabulate at the end. Yeah, I'm keeping Got track it. of this. Um, and also to give a little background, you know, like you can go to all the blogs and sites that we talk about here. And we often have a lot of writers from come on the show. They put it through the paces. They do all those crazy benchmarks and all this sort of stuff. I, I don't have time for that. And I also don't care about that <laughs> stuff. I just, you know, so like when we were talking about what matters to us it's you know we said it's the design and feel of the phone how is using it performance and then the last category which is the camera um and so looking at the camera um i i uh, well uh, i feel i had mixed results with the camera um i love the crazy wide um wa uh, large wide uh, large aspect ra range you can set the camera to do um Four, you know, four by three, 16, nine, one by one or full, which takes the full aspect ratio. I took all of my photos in full because I think that's crazy and awesome. Um, and it also <laughs> offers, you know, four by three at 48 megapixel. Um, and there's a bunch of different options within the camera, similar to how, you know, um, you know, the, the Google camera offers where there's a portrait mode. And of course you can take video and all that sort of stuff. Um, I took some, I, here, if you're watching the video, Burke is showing some of the photos that I, that I took in my, uh, on my patio and in the apartment with it. Um, I thought that it picked up uh, light really well. I thought it picked up colors. I took some of my kids' toys, pictures to see how colors would pop and try to do some, you know, kind of focus, out of focus kind of effects and all that sort of stuff. Um, but in looking at it, I, I just felt the pictures were just lacking a little bit. And I don't know if that's my inability to actually be a good photographer or not. But um, even under the portrait mode, there was a bunch of different kind of novelty modes that I played with. You know, there's 3D photo effect and cartoon background and sketch background. I did the 3D photo effect and I found like the little 3D motion. There was all this digital noise on the photo and there was a lot of artifacts and things like that that were happening. And as I zoomed in and looked closer, I saw that was happening on, on more and more photos. So I did have mixed results with the camera personally. Um, Flo, did you have similar results or? Yeah, it – the thing about LG phones, or at least the last batch that have come out, is that the photos are just like good enough. But when you try and do anything specialized, like a portrait mode, you start to really understand that there's so much work that goes into the camera app to kind of get the desired effect that you would on like a Google Pixel, right? Um, this is not shooting photos akin to what I have seen of the Pixel 4a. But it's good enough. There's fun stuff on it. Um, I had uploaded a little video that I'd taken of my always on display, by the way, just because I'm very pleased with the Sailor Moon logo. Um, but as far as like photos go, they're fine for social media. They're fine for like general archiving, but it's not, you know, it's not the best camera that you have as the camera in your pocket kind of phone. If that makes yep. sense. Yeah. Yep. Jason, how did you how, how did your experience go? Well, um, so this is weird. Uh, I'll do my review through the camera app. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Cameras are okay, right? Like the primary, the primary camera. 
I would say it was good enough for, I, th I, I like how you put it flow, like pretty good for social media, let's say. Um, if you're going to really be, you know, getting, getting in there and analyzing the pixels and everything, it's probably not the right camera system for you. The primary camera is okay. The wide is a bit fuzzy when you, when you do pictures with the wide angle. Um, the camera interface, again, like I think this goes back to kind of LG's approach, just not really working for me, but there's just certain things about it. I, I find it that in some ways it's similar to what I'm used to on the Pixel, but then in other ways I would have to tap a couple of times just to like to get things to register. And um, I'm not a huge fan of some of these other portrait mode things. I don't know. It, it was rather unimpressive, mm -hmm. especially because it's really hard to compare in this price range. And this is actually more expensive than the 4A or the 3A. And, you know, from that, you know, it's $599 for this phone. And uh, still, the camera system is nowhere near what you get out of the lesser expensive 3A and 4A. So it's fine, but I don't know. If I had to give it a number, it'd be a three. It might even be a two and a half, but I'll give it a three. I'll go ahead. My score was my score was a three as well. Flo, where do you come at number one? Yeah, wise? same thing. Three, three. All Just right. squarely in the three. Much better than LG used to do, though. Okay. So I will say. I will I will say, and then I'll throw it to Flo before we wrap up and I got to tabulate these numbers. I did put it in the dual screen case. And first I showed my wife and that the little thing, pop, the little display popped up and she went, whoa. And then I showed her the dual screen and it and it literally blew her mind. And and basically, and I showed her all the different ways it can work and the game pad and all that sort of stuff. And she's like, well, that's basically like a laptop. And I was, you know, so that then, then spurred a, a discussion about how we use phones and what is the use case for this phone. But Flo, wh what, it, what you went deeper with the dual screen uh, kind of aspect of it. What more can you tell us about that? Well, what I really like about the dual screen is it it brings me what I really want, which is the Surface, Surface Duo. <laughs> huh. um, I've been eagerly awaiting this device to come out. And so this idea right here, just like, the thinness of the phone coupled with the way that I had mentioned they had redone this dual screen, it's not as thick as it was with the V60 ThinQ. I thought that was a little too like dense. This is a little lighter to it and it feels like, you know, it really feels, you guys remember those uh, Casio like digital diaries they had back in the day? Um, oh yeah. I yep. had one. <laughs> it was, you know, um, aqua themed colored and has a little had a little virtual pet on it but it feels like that in terms of like this is something that i would just throw in my bag and have as a dual screen device and things i used it for as i mentioned earlier i tried using the lg keyboard app to do the whole dual screen typing thing where you have like the keyboard on the bottom uh, display the heavier kind of end and then you have the screen on top I try to do that with this markdown app that I like to use um, and it just was not it just wasn't working out the way that it would on one of those Casios back in the day with physical QWERTY keyboard I kind of ended up like tap typing or touch yeah tap typing like having just one finger at a time to tap out and I was like this is I'm not getting anything done with this but if I could if I wanted to, I could just flip it backwards, have it stand up like this. Um, so the way I have it for those listening to the audio is it's uh, the Tem flip case bends backwards so that you can actually kind of prop it up. And what I would do is I would just pair it with a wireless keyboard and get work done that way. But it's still just it's still missing oh. some things that I think would really help really help make use of that dual screen. It's got the same little widget as the V60 ThinQ, which you tap and then it gives you a couple of like different modes that you can use, which is great. Uh, you have Google apps that you can use with the dual screen, kind of have it uh, expand. I did that with Chrome, which is great. It, there's a couple other browsers in the Play Store that do this. But because the ecosystem is so small and limited in terms of what I can do, and I know that Companies like Microsoft, which are putting out a device in due time, they are working on their own development to kind of make the device have apps that work with it that way. It's it's hard to see the true value of a dual screen outside of, well, this is neat. So yep, yep. It's, that's just kind of where it that. is. It's like, I still think it's super neat. Um, I'm probably still going to toss this into my purse when I go and like, 
we've been doing this thing where we all take like a quick little drive and then I'll hang out in the car with the kid while my husband goes and like get something or whatever, just to get out of the house. Just be a great little thing to carry around. Have a, I have my little e-reader on there. I have, you know, other little bits and bobs. So it's, again, it's not a required part of the phone, but it certainly adds little value to it. Just a little I will, though. I will, I will say that the way it sits in the device, it does in the, in the, um, dual screen, mm-hmm. it doesn't, it's not easily popped out. So if you're going with this, you're committing yeah. to this and it's not the kind of thing where I'm like, Oh, oh yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to carry. Cause it, it does add a significant amount of bulk and weight to the phone, which we previously said was light and smooth and very, you know, kind of handy. Um, so if you're, if you want to kind of go between the two, you're going to find yourself wrestling with it a lot more than like to the point where I'm like, am I breaking it? Right. Um, yeah. cause it, it snaps in there pretty hard. Uh, but that said, Flo, you're absolutely right. It's a it's a cool little novelty. And if I if we commuted ever again, but like if I had an yeah. hour long commute, this would be a great commuting device. This would be like sitting on the train, reading, watching something, actually getting some work done. Like I could see it being a neat device for uh, for commuting. So um, cool. All right. Well, to wrap this up. Um, we gave we overall the three of us give the design and feel a four. We netted out on performance a 3.6 with a line over it, uh, and we all gave the camera a three. And so the dual screen isn't something that we'll rate. That's just a little kind of note about this. Yeah. So that gives the phone and overall the first official All About Android three three view review gives the LG Velvet a 3.5, which I feel is okay. uh, appropriate because like that's the three fair. Of us. Total. Yeah, 3.5. Um, I feel like that's a pretty fair fair rating for this device. Yeah. So if if this connected with you, Flo, how much would this phone plus the dual screen cost? It would cost around seven hundred dollars to get the whole package. It's five ninety nine just for the phone itself, which is already kind of like, ooh. yeah. Uh, I was pulling my collar for those ooh. listening to the audio, yeah. um, and then the extra screen would be an extra hundred or so. I'm sure they'll have a deal at AT and T or something. It's a lot of money. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of, money. of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I'm, I'm also seeing that um, the dual screen attachment, is it $199 or is it $99? Maybe. Uh, if it's $199, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. There's no yeah. way it's $199 because it does not oomph, you um, know. Yeah, right. Is it worth $200? Is it, it says, worth taking... Like I'm looking on a Verge article and it's saying it's $199, but maybe maybe if you're buying this through a carrier, they might have deals uh, to to get that price less. I can get like so. two computer monitors for $200 more, so that's why I'm very like, yeah, you know, that's if yeah, if if you want one of these with the dual screen and it's going to cost you $800, that's a eh, you're thinking twice on that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Interesting. All good. right, but for the for the device itself, three point five is what we came up with, right? And I think that's super fair. Yeah, I think that's and fair. I think I LG did. has is onto something with this dual screen situation. But I really feel like if they want to make any sort of moves in the Android sphere, if they want to be kind of regarded the way they were mere years ago, they really need to focus on that interface. Focus on buttoning down that camera hardware. I think one of their biggest things was always to have that raw mode and the manual mode. And that is kind of, you know, awesome for people to tinker with. I feel like just focusing on that and making the dual screen a little more of a permanent part, make it feel like more of a permanent part of the phone would kind of really help down the line. So, yeah. Yeah. 